we're talking about some geometric intuition, getting some geometric intuition for the Gaussian, multivariate Gaussian. And we were using the affine property, so we started out with x, which was a standard normal here, zero mean and covariance matrix i. And then we took an arbitrary covariance matrix, and we were playing around with it, and we, we decomposed it in this in this this sort of natural way, diagonalize it, and, and use that property. And um, so maybe I should mention one thing. I've been talking about sort of um, covariance matrices and uh, positive definite matrices and positive semi-definite matrices. And sometimes I said symmetric and sometimes I, I didn't say that. But to be clear, I always mean when I, I, I may have not, I may have left off the symmetric part when I was talking about a positive semi-definite matrix or a positive definite matrix. But to be clear, all the, all the, all the matrices C that we've been talking about in the last few videos here, they, they, they're all symmetric matrices. So if I didn't say symmetric for some of them, then, then it should be, I should have said that. All right, so we started out here with this X, and then we're looking at how, by the process of this affine transformation, how what what happens to the level sets of the the distribution of these random variables? So we start out with X, and then and this one was had spherical level sets, and that was cool. Have just nice simple IID components, and then we saw that by multiplying by this lambda to the power one half matrix that we got a normally distributed thing and once again of course just but and it was still centered at zero and now we rescaled it so this was sort of a scaling step and it rescaled into let me put here so we said that lambda one the first eigenvalue was 25 so this is five and this is two that one was four so this sort of starts to give you some intuition for what the eigenvalues mean, and we're going to see in a second what the eigenvectors mean. And I, I find this really neat because I, for a long time I was I was just flabbergasted by eigenvalues and eigenvectors. What did, what do these things mean? And at least in this case with a covariance, in the case of a covariance matrix, this gives you a really really very intuitive way to understand what the eigenvalues and eigenvectors mean. So, so then, so after that, we multiplied by this U matrix, this this orthogonal matrix where the columns were the eigenvectors. And I want to tell you now. So we got this thing, which had covariance C. Now the what? So it rotated this thing. And now it's rotated. But what does it rotate it to? Well, it rotates it to be aligned with. This is supposed to be and ellipse, it rotated it to be aligned with the eigenvectors. So these, the axes along which the, this ellipse is oriented after rotating it are just the eigenvectors of C. So, and why is that the case? Well, if this was our, this was our original x1 coordinate, this was our x2 coordinate, if we multiply, so say we had a point over here, say say we look, look at this point here, where x1 has some, some value and all the others are 0, x2 is 0 and so on. So when we multiply u times that thing, which is like 1, 0, 0, then it's, it's a linear combination of the columns and we just get Say if it was one, for example, say this is a point one, or, or maybe five or something, I should put five. Then we just get five times u, right? So five times u, then that's just along this this u, this uh, or this u rather u one, five times u one. So that's along the u one direction. That's along the the first eigenvector. And similarly for if we just had something over here, maybe I'll use yellow, where x2 had a value and x1 was 0 and all the others were 0, and we did something similar. Well, let me uh, erase this so you don't get confused. If we did something similar. Then we would just, you know, you multiply u times that thing, and you get this point here. 
So you just take this thing, if you were to imagine visually, take a copy of this and then rotate it until the x1 axis lines up with u1, the u1 eigenvector, the x2 axis lines up with u2, and so on and so forth. All the others align with, their, with the eigenvectors, and then the resulting thing is this. So it's just rotating it to, to the eigenvectors. All right, and now we're ready for the last step, and I think you can probably imagine what it's, you can probably guess what's going to happen. So in the last step, we're going to take u, lambda to the 1 half x, and add mu, right? This is the, we're finishing this operation here, this, this affine operation. And that is going to be, by the affine property, whoops, normal with mean mu and covariance c. Sorry, it's kind of squeezed there. Just by the affine property from starting from this step. And so this one, I'm sure you can see what's going to happen. So if say mu was, I don't know, say mu was mu was like this point here or something. Then we're just going to shift this by mu to, so that the center is at mu. And I will try very hard to draw some nice ellipses here. It's supposed to be exactly the same as that, but just shift it. All right, you get the idea. And that point there is mu. And so that is the process. So, so an arbitrary Gaussian can be constructed by this sort of process. So this gives you some intuition. So, so these are sort of, I was drawing them as these ellipsoids in, in three dimensions. Let me maybe draw those ellipsoids. This maybe hopefully gives you some intuition for how how an arbitrary Gaussian what it looks like and and, and what what is the relationship between this the, what it looks like the geometry and the the eigenvalues and the eigenvectors. Oh, and one other point about these eigenvectors: since this is a symmetric matrix, then you can prove it's just a little linear algebra. The eigenvectors here, well, I mean, since it's an orthogonal matrix, since U is an orthogonal matrix, then, then the eigenvectors are all orthogonal one to another. And that was so, so you know, here this forms an, an, a new coordinate system where the, the new sort of the, U, the new coordinates, if they were U1, U2, and so on, they are orthogonal, pairwise orthogonal. So to summarize, we could describe each of these steps in this process. So this step here, this was a, a scaling step. Each of the coordinates could be scaled differently. So this was scaling. This step was a, so the, so the lambda, the eigenvalues have the scaling. The u, the, the eigenvectors, have the rotation. And the mu, of course, I'm sure you, you could just see, the mu has the shift or the position, the translation. So that you can decompose these different aspects of, of the distribution, the shift, the rotation, and the scaling into these separate parts, the eigenvalues, or in order, I guess they would, the mu, the rotation, and the eigen, the, the mu, the eigenvectors, and the eigenvalues. Now, I want to give you a word of caution. Here, when we were dealing with the covariance matrix, and this was a normal distribution, the, the largest eigenvalue corresponded to the the direction the, the dimension that this thing was shifted so when 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 the eigenvalue was large then this got stretched out to be large in that that direction the oval the ellipsoid was large in that direction but that is because 
uh, we're inverting the matrix C in the expression for the, the density. If you just look at, so that's because this matrix, this, the, the quadratic form, remember a quadratic form describes an ellipse, the level sets of a quadratic form are an ellipse, but the quadratic form that we are considering is x minus mu transpose C inverse x minus mu. So if we decompose, let's just write this out. C C was remember C was we we had it as this thing here. So if we invert C, we get U U transpose inverse is just U because it's orthogonal. Lambda inverse and U tra uh, U inverse is U transpose. So we get so we get this times x minus mu. And uh, so the quadratic form, when, if, you're, if you're thinking about a quadratic form, so here the, the, the lambda was, was inverted. So lambda inverse is lambda 1 inverse, that's just 1 over lambda 1, lambda n inverse. And so when you're just thinking about a quadratic form, the eigen the, the eigenvalues of the A matrix, so if we had you know an, a quadratic form like this, the eigenvalues of the A matrix, the, the largest eigenvalue of the A matrix corresponds to the smallest direction, the, the, the direction in which the, the ellipse is the smallest, the, sort of the width of the ellipse in some sense is smallest. And that's just because you're you're taking one over. So the eigen eigenvalues of this A matrix here, well, you know, if I subtract it off mu and all that stuff, the eigenvalues of this A matrix are are going to be small when the eigenvalues of the C matrix are large. So it's just a just a word of warning to, you know, um, if you're thinking about uh, a quadratic form. Where you're not inverting the, the the matrix. All right, so I hope this was some. I, I really like this decomposing it in this way and, and thinking of it this way. I think it's a very very nice way to understand what the different parts of the the distribution, the different parameters are doing. And I hope that uh, I hope that it was useful for you too.